I have become very intentional with, like whenever I see a friend of mine, somebody's got a new book out or somebody's doing something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I pray God's favor and yes. blessing yes. upon them. Yes. And I'll exactly. write about yeah. it, that they've got mm -hmm. it. Because I think that yeah. our world wants to set us yeah. up to Absolutely. be competitive, yeah. which yeah. is the antithesis, antithesis. of Absolutely. the gospel. I love having good girlfriends where yeah. you can sit around and just talk to them mm -hmm. about anything. Yeah. But we have, not we and all, but a lot of times we have been conditioned to believe that women can't get along. It's true. That mm -hmm. we can't have best friends mm -hmm. as women, you know, like a girl got to have a guy friend or whatever. Um, but I don't, I just don't buy into that. Yeah. My yeah. girlfriends are very important to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Now, mine really? are too, but honestly, yeah. it took me years to get to that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had yeah. a really a kind of a distrust thing. Yeah. with other women and it was because when I was 19 and I went to seminary in London and th two thirds of the s seminarians were men and a third were women. And I thought it was, I mean, I came from a little fishing town on the west coast of Scotland and now mm -hmm. I'm in London, the seminary. I thought it was going to be like heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. okay. We all love Jesus. Yeah. This is going to be amazing. You know. <laughs> and a lot of the women were older than me. They were actually heading up for the mission field and I was 19. And I remember one day, walking to class and I saw a group of the women on the grass in a circle praying. And I thought, oh, yay, I'm going to go join them. Oh. So as I got closer, I heard they were praying about me. Oh, no, they were not. not. No, and they were yeah, not. Yeah, and it was asking God to help them understand how to help this Jezebel. Oh. Now, I'm a very conservative. We want names yeah. in a dress. <laughs> yes, I want names in a dress. Sheila, who are they? <laughs> Oh, but I think it's because I was younger oh, and I had a oh. pair of red leather boots. And for some reason in their mind, oh. red leather boots said <laughs> one thing. Where did this come from? Yes. And Just honestly, oh. it, it broke my heart. This yeah. is I know, first I know. Yeah. With female friendships. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I remember running back to my oh, dorm room and God. just being brokenhearted, so thinking, wow. Lord, there's something wrong with me that they see me that way. And so I became very quiet during the wow. rest of my time. And even next. when I joined, I was part of something called Women of Faith, mm -hmm. which you were with us, yeah, Nicole. Yeah. For 20 years, it was a group of same six women mm -hmm. traveling around the country. And I remember in the first year, Marilyn Meberg and I were asked to go to Vegas and do some radio stuff because we were coming there in a few months. And we had, we did our stuff and then we had the afternoon free. And Marilyn said, maybe we'll do something later together. Well, I went out by myself and went shopping and had dinner by myself. And she said to me the next day, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah, sure. She said, you kind of hurt my feelings yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I said, why? And she said, well, I thought we were going to do something together. But honestly, in my mind, mm -hmm. I felt convinced you prefer not to. Mm -hmm. You're going to say that because you think it's the right thing uh, to do. Right. So I voted myself off the island wow. for years wow. before other people could, wow. because I thought they were going to do it. Yeah. And But I have to tell you, the greatest turning point is discovering the wealth of yeah. girlfriends, mm -hmm. sisters in the Lord mm -hmm. that you trust, that know you, that love you. One of the issues that I've struggled with, honestly, in my own life is friendship, knowing how to be a good friend. When you grow up with a kind of negative feeling about your own life, like when I was a younger woman, if you had been able to kind of dig down into the cellar of my soul, the foundational stone would have said, I'm too broken to be loved. And it was only when my life kind of crumbled and I discovered at my, what I considered my worst, how much God loved me. It was like discovering the truth of Psalm 34, where it says, um, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, not distant. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. It also says earlier in that Psalm, those who look to Him, to Jesus for, for strength, will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will touch their faces. And when you and I understand how loved we are by God at our best moments and our worst moments, then I think that gives us the security and the foundation to be able to reach out and be a good friend. When I think about scripture, I think there are probably more verses mm -hmm. about community mm -hmm. and friendship yeah. than there are about actual marriage. There's a handful about marriage, right. but there are so many about community mm -hmm. and koinonia, fellowship mm -hmm. and friendship, iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. and, and so many other verses about friendship. But we definitely put marriage on a pedestal. 
Hmm. And we kind of neglect the importance mm-hmm. of friendship. That's you interesting. Know? Yeah. And because we don't want to work. We think friendships is optional. We don't want to do that work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now you're married. You have to do the work. So it's like if I look at you mm-hmm. as a piece of work, mm-hmm. then I don't want to be a part of the work. Mm-hmm. Right? But I always say all relationships are work. Yeah. 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 Whatever relationship you're in, it's going to require work. So Whether true. you're married, a good girlfriend, your parents, your children. Yeah. It's all work. Yeah. And But it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well as when you get in a relationship and you don't see it, you know, blossoming automatically, you want to cut it off, but you don't realize that it requires you putting in something Mm. in order to get something out of it. it. Mm -hmm. It's just like my friends, I had to teach them how to be my friend. Like they have to teach me how to be be their friend. Mm. And sometimes we just don't want that work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I appreciate you saying that was a journey for you and it took a while to learn how to be a good friend mm-hmm. and that they were important because I mean I feel like I still kind of struggle with that I feel like growing up um, I had friends and I I think in my mind you just think if you have a friend they're going to be your friend mm-hmm. forever yep. yeah. and you won't have any issues and you just you're friends <laughs> and um, and I think even getting older and then getting into ministry um, my husband and I lead a church I think um, there's been a lot of um, leaving mm-hmm. from me, and I'm I'm not doing the leaving necessarily, mm-hmm. but there are people in my past who have been close to me, mm-hmm. and then they leave. And so I feel like even in the past, gosh, 10 years, I've just been struggling to figure out like, yeah. okay, how do I find good friends? How do I be a good friend, but also let people go when it's time for yeah. them to go, yeah. but there's also seasons, embrace yeah. the people who, yeah. and so I think that's exactly it. I've been learning like there's seasons to mm-hmm. friendships. There's seasons to a friend that you have for a long time, but there's also seasons of right. friends yeah. where there's some yeah. that come in your life and then they go. Mm-hmm. And and I think I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. So I'm I'm writing down notes and learning from you guys, but I think knowing that it's true, we need each other but what do, what does that mean? I feel like yeah. I'm still in a place where I'm learning. Like, okay, yeah. who do I let in? Who who can I trust? Who's yeah. who's yeah. leading me more to Jesus and right. yeah. um, inspiring me? And I think it, it's kind of messy in my life right now. But I do have a few friends. But I think mm. that I'm I'm learning. Yeah. yeah, that's good though. I think that's that's real. It's raw, but it's where we live. I, I think if we were all at the same place then there'd be no need for anybody to listen in because it's like, I can't relate. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if we're all in different places yeah. of our journey, it, mm-hmm. some people can say, well, hey, that's where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Or that's where I'm at, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you yeah. know, and, and I think for probably all of us, we have to be wise as to who we allow into our close yeah, friend sure. circle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Too. And then mm-hmm. there are people that are just our acquaintances, mm-hmm. that right. gonna, you know? Mm-hmm. And the other people that are going to become close friends or... You know, and some of the close friends, like somebody told me before, they were like, sometimes your friends are going to shift places on the bus. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> wow, saying? Wow, that's some good. Some people who are in the front <laughs> seat really uh, will eventually go to the middle and maybe mm-hmm. to the back. And then those who are in the back may come to the front. Yeah. And then you may get new people coming onto the bus mm-hmm. that weren't on the bus at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good. So I think that's if really you're good. open to that, allowing the Lord yeah. to allow different people to take different mm-hmm. places and different seats, yeah. then it works. In order for us to have honest and vulnerable friendships, I think we have to start by being honest and vulnerable ourselves. You know, this day and age on Instagram and social media, I think it's easy for us to want to filter every aspect of our lives. We want the picture perfect view of our life, but that doesn't work in real life relationships. In order for us to really be honest and authentic and vulnerable, we need to let down the filter and let people into the deepest parts of our lives. Let them in to the good stuff, but also let them into the messy stuff. And I think this takes practice, and I think it takes us being intentional about letting people into some of those hard places. But if we want to be in vulnerable, authentic relationships, we need to start by being vulnerable and authentic ourselves. I you think know. it goes back to us again, just like we had talked about in marriage. It's like we have this unrealistic expectation that we put on 
our friendships as yeah. well, our good uh -huh. girlfriends. We think they're supposed to be this everything to us. Yeah. For me, it's like, okay, you may be the friend I can take to the mall with. I love shopping mm -hmm. with you. This friend doesn't like hanging out. Yeah, the mall, yeah. yeah. She, she ain't got time. Yeah. She want to be on with her husband mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, okay, good, yeah. you know. But this, <laughs> this friend over, over here, here may be what I, who I can talk to for some Private, personal right. things, or right. or That's what, good. and that may switch. That's right. Yeah. You know. That's okay. Right. I make it talk to her about my husband, but I make it talk to you about my children. That's right. But I think if That's we right, keep it so broad, yeah. it'll help us better. But mm -hmm. we limit so our true. relationships mm -hmm. yeah. by, you know. Thinking, I gotta trust everybody with everything, no, or yeah, one person no. with no, everything, no, no. Wow. Yeah. and I think that's unfair weight as well. That's right. Because just because I, what I do, with, even with my relationships, it's like I believe I'm sowing into a relationship, but not necessarily meaning I'm gonna reap see, from that same from person. that same that's relationship. Right. That's right. It's like that's I just good. wanna sow into friendship. That's good. So when I need friendship, friendship is yeah. gonna that's be there that's for right. me. That's yeah. right. And it may yeah. not be the person I sowed that's into. Very good. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. But yeah. again, that comes through developing your relationship with God, having a level of security, yeah. Yeah. knowing yeah. who you are. Yeah. So I don't have to put on you what I need. I would encourage someone who's having a hard time developing good friendships and sisterhoods to do what the scripture says. First of all, make sure you're submitted, submitted to the Lord, okay? Make sure that you are in the sisterhood because God is your father through the person of Jesus Christ. That's first. Then second, ask him to bring into your life the right sisters that he'd have you to connect with. And then make sure that you're showing yourself friendly. Make sure that you're presenting yourself as a good friend and that you're sowing the seeds that you want to um, see germinate and harvest later on in your life. So if you want good friends who are steady, be steady. If you want friends who are kind, be kind. If you want friends who are trustworthy, make sure that you're being trustworthy. And then begin to look for those people when you're encountering different, when you're in different situations, you know, ask the Lord, hey, is that her? Is that her? And then allow Him to authentically connect you together. My sisters taught me something, my biological sisters, um, in the fact that, you know, there are times we could disagree, we could fight, we can go at it, whatever. I'm not talking to you anymore. But at the end of the day, we're still sisters. Right. <laughs> you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we may as well get over it. And we always have. And so I think the same is true when we have God as our Father, Christ as our Savior. Mm -hmm. He makes us sisters. So even if like yeah. we don't talk every day, even if we're not mm -hmm. even kicking it how we used mm -hmm. to, even if we have a disagreement, at the end of the day, you're still my sis. Yeah. I might not even like you. You're still my sister. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So with that mm -hmm. being that it, as it is, it allows, like I said earlier, people to take different positions on that bus, knowing that we're still family at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's we're good. not always up right. each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I always go back to this whole trust thing. I'm a little different when it comes to that. But I do believe that, again, we put so much trust in relationships and not put our trust in the one that says to trust him That's with right. all of our heart, right? Yeah. And I believe that God is obligated to protect me when I obey what he's told me to do. Mm. And so I don't depend on people to hold whatever um, giving them to hold. That's just, mm -hmm. now you as a yeah. therapist, a counselor, you may would tell me, you know, yeah. something totally different and I would love to hear it, but it's like, God, I'm going to trust you. You've mm -hmm. told me mm -hmm. to connect yeah. with this person. Yeah. You're obligated to protect me. Yes. Nobody can assassin my character, yeah. my, my integrity and who I am. It's like, I'm, I don't know if I tell you something mm -hmm. and then you let it go. That's not my fault. God, yeah. you got to cover absolutely. me now. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you understand? Yeah. It's like yeah. I genuinely yeah. loved you and I yeah. genuinely came to you out of, you know, some care and concern that you are dependable and you yeah. would protect. Mm -hmm. But now when you don't, it's like, God, OK, yeah. you told me to connect. God, we know that we're not an island and we yeah. cannot do life alone. And people aren't perfect we, either. People yeah. are not perfect. Yeah. And we have to connect yeah. to people. And I think that's where the disappointment comes. And when we put that responsibility so much on an individual, when they can't meet it, yeah. now we don't want to give anyone else the a chance, chance yeah. you know, yeah. to come in. Yeah. And I had to learn that really being in ministry, I'm in, in ministry for 30 years. And I think about all of the people that have come in and that have hurt 
Mm-hmm. You know, have promised and oh, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm just like God. <laughs> right, you know, right, I you hear his all yeah. of this stuff, <laughs> and you you look one day and you've done all of this stuff for him, and then they gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thank God for my ability not to be not to hold that against, against the next person that that's comes good. in. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And that's so good. to me, that's it's good. the same way with yeah. my relationships. Mm-hmm. You that's know, right. it's yeah. like, okay, you hurt me, but yeah. that doesn't mean she's going to hurt me. That's right. right. So yeah, right. you got to keep trying. Yeah, I think the good. difference is what we do next. Yeah. When I have trusted you with that first, that first scoop here, mm-hmm. hold this. See, let's see how this goes. And then I start seeing a pattern. Mm-hmm. You're not really mm. coming through. You you keep dropping it. You keep disrespecting it. Mm-hmm. You're not caring about it. I think that's when we then pull back and say, okay, Holy Spirit, yeah. what do mm-hmm. you want me to do here? Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing a pattern and, and I need to follow your lead here. You know, when we talk about trust and we put so much weight on trust, God never told us to trust. He told us to love. Love will always trump trust. Love will allow you to do what trust won't allow you to do. Trust will tell you, get out of the relationship. Don't be in a relationship. Go on about your business. But love says to forgive, to be long-suffering, to be kind. It tells you to don't keep them accountable to what they have done to you in the past. It also goes into talking about to love as Christ loves us. What about jealousy in relationships? Because mm. I know that that's one thing that can, women can struggle with, you know, comparison. And, you know, I've found that, I remember when I first started with Women of Faith and there would be other women up on stage and I'm thinking, oh my God, yeah. that was brilliant. That was anointed. This person is the fourth person of the Trinity. Right. You know, and I'm supposed to get up afterwards and totally. speak. Totally, oh and my God. And it's like, I think that's something that it's good to be intentional about. And, and work out. And I found myself, I'll see one of my friends that I absolutely love and she's off at some conference speaking with two or three of our other friends and I'm like, why am I not there? You know? <laughs> I mean, all those stupid things that I, I just think That's we live. That's real though. I know. Real. That is so real. But we live in a world where those things are constantly placed before us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I have, I mean, I have become very intentional with like whenever I see a friend of mine, somebody's got a new book out or somebody's doing something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I pray God's favor and yes, blessing yes. upon them. Yes. And I'll exactly, write about yeah. it, that they've got yeah. it. Because I think that yeah. our world wants to set us yeah. up to Absolutely. be competitive, yeah. which yeah. is the antithesis yeah. of Absolutely. the gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the more we do celebrate them, the more we are like encouraged by the success that they have. It frees us. Yeah. And I think it also, allows God to say, okay, I have some good for you. I'm not going to withhold mm-hmm. it, but it kind of puts you next in line. Or even if it doesn't, it allows you to have that hope of, wow, God, you did it for my girl. Yeah. You know what yes. I'm saying? Even if you don't mm-hmm. do it for me, mm-hmm. you're still doing good yeah. good things. You're still giving out mm-hmm. good blessings. You still have good men out there mm-hmm. for yeah. your girls. And so it's like, I think the more we celebrate, yeah. it's like borrowed joy yeah. to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can yeah. borrow your joy and it's never Love mine. My good. sister got married mm-hmm. way before I did. And I was like, well, Lord, even if you don't have anybody for me, I'm going to celebrate her. Yeah. Because I know what she's gone through, uh-huh. like, you know, and yeah. before I knew it, it was my turn. Yeah. yeah. You know, but even if it wasn't, I had joy from her. Yeah. 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 Points to a big God, because yeah. I think sometimes we think if someone else is experiencing something amazing and awesome, then that means maybe there's less for me or yeah. I, I, yeah. how do I it's fit in God. that? Yeah. Right. But when we see that he's such a big God yeah. Yeah. and he's blessed someone with an amazing gift, yeah. I, I, you do have to be intentional with it yeah. because it's like, oh my gosh, God's doing such a beautiful thing in her life. He can He can do something yeah. through me and it's more inspiring, but you right. kind of have to fight for that mindset yeah. to not think, oh, I right. wish, but wow, God, what do you have for me? If you're yeah. using yeah. her in such an amazing way, That's how so do you want to yeah. use me? And yeah. I want to surrender to you in a, more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that happened recently, actually, where one of my friends was... Um, was preaching. And I just see all the things that she goes through and the difficulty, but how God's just blessing her and using her. And I just the whole time felt like I had goosebumps the whole time because I was like, God, you are so good. You are so big. And if you can do that, then you can Absolutely. you can use me Absolutely. and my Absolutely. brokenness Absolutely. and in my mess. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that that we, but you do have to fight for that because it's easy to be jealous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's easy yeah. to compare, but you have to. Do the hard work mm-hmm. of 
Lord, you, yep. have, you, to, do. you yeah. have to feel real good about yourself. Yes. Yes. I promise you yes. and be confident in who you are. Because mm -hmm. I went through some of the same things. I remember when I started out in ministry, I was connected to two other ministries and the wives would get up there and they would preach and teach that word. I mean, just speak so eloquently. <laughs> I mean, everything was just so mm -hmm. awesome. And I would be sitting back saying, Oh, I know. God, yeah. you did not call me. <laughs> you did not call me because I compared mm -hmm. myself to sure. everything yeah. sure. about who they were. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm. I'm yeah. never doing that. Mm. I'm not getting up there yeah. until I begin to know that it's not based upon how eloquent or how good somebody yeah. sounds. But see, like, I think honestly, even though you're saying your mindset wasn't the right one, it's a better mindset mm. than... I can do that. Why are they there? Oh, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's actually, true. in my opinion, right. puts you more in a humility position of, I don't see, I'm not thinking more highly of myself than I I never ought. thought of it like And then that. God wow. says, because you're choosing you to humble. No, <laughs> you chose to humble yourself. That's why he said, right. now you're qualified. You yeah. can qualify now because you know yeah. you don't. Yeah. You know it's what I'm saying? Comparison. Instead of the opposite. Yeah. But, yeah. but instead of that. I put myself here. Yeah. And this way, I, I want to put myself here. And I think they're both, they can both lead us away from where God is calling us. One of my favorite theologians, a uh, gentleman actually named Leslie, Leslie Newbigin, he says this, he says, the Christian community or congregation is the most effective hermeneutic of the gospel. In other words, we see Jesus more clearly through the lens of each other, through community, through friendship, through relationship. I think some really simple ways that we can love one another well are look people in the eye. I feel like we're losing eye-to-eye -eye contact in our culture. So many people are looking at their phones or at their, their Apple watches. Look people in the eye when they're talking and then smile. Uh, sometimes just a genuine smile, looking somebody in the eye and asking them sincerely, how are you doing today? Um, that's community, that's rich, that's actually the beginning of a real relationship. A lot of times in marriage, one of the things that really helps me is to think of my husband and I as one, we're on the same team, right? But the next evolution is for us to begin to see that in our friendships. Mm -hmm. Because doesn't Jesus, during his prayer, Mm -hmm. When he was praying for the disciples, he prayed that they would be, be one. one. Yes. Like we think one. about being one in marriage, but we don't often think, okay, let me see us all as a team. Yeah. We are one. Yeah, yeah. When, yeah. You succeed, yep. I when you succeed, I succeed. When you minister God's word, That's his right. word is going yeah. out. Yes. When you publish a book, truth is going out into yeah. the word. Yes. When when your album sells a million copies, yeah. mm -hmm. people are being blessed. Yeah. I need to see no, that so team. Good. We're one. Because yeah. so for the kingdom. So good. None yeah. of it's for us. Absolutely. It's like I think when you have this, I guess because I'm getting older now, I have this kind of fresh longing mm. for that time when we're finally home, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. we get to cast our crowns at His feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, yeah, if I think it's all about me and what I can achieve, because yeah. I, I mean, I keep going back to this, but we're told that when we finally see Him, He'll say, well done, good and faithful servant, mm. right. not well done, good and published oh, author. There you go. Right. Well done, there good and go. right. effective speaker. Right. Uh -huh. It's not, none of yeah. that. Good job you got all those Instagram followers. Yeah, yeah. 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 probably not going to show up yeah. in heaven. <laughs> but it's being faithful where yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. yes. Because when you're not happy for somebody else, it doesn't harm them, it harms you. It harms yeah. you. Right. you know, that yeah. becomes like a poison. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas when you can determine mm. in the power of the Holy Spirit with the grace of God, to turn that into praying favor and blessing mm -hmm. over their lives. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So even doing it when you don't feel like doing it, yeah. right? Because yes. you're not led by your flesh. In fact, maybe even the the sign that we should do it is that that feeling inside of us that we don't want to. Right. Mm -hmm. So when that jealousy creeps mm -hmm. up, like, ooh, look at her on, look Why at her social me? media page. Maybe then that's the moment where I DM her and say, you're looking beautiful yeah. today. Yeah. God bless yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or that yeah. moment where I'm feeling a little jealous that somebody did something, maybe they released an album. I I, I share it. Yeah. I shout out yeah. about it. I encourage them. That's Doing so the helpful. opposite of my flesh yeah. 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 That's mm -hmm. a can lead me thing. more yeah. towards yeah. the spirit. I think the jealousy part though too, I think Sometimes it's the mentality of, God, you're not good enough to give it to me. 
instead of me believing that no good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. If that thing was good for me, I'd have it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But obviously you don't think it's good for me now, so I'm gonna celebrate my sister having mm -hmm. it. Yes. Because mm -hmm. if it was good for me, you'd give it. Mm -hmm. And so I think when I want what he's given to you, and he hasn't given to me, it's me saying, you're you're not good. You don't know what's best for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what's best for me. And that was, and and then that would be me, mm -hmm. me trying to be God and I'm not him. Yeah. So the best I can do honestly is say, God, I trust you with my timetable. Mm -hmm. I trust you with my relationships. Yeah. I trust you with my advances, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. I trust you. My, you know, you're God. And when you say it's my turn, it's my turn. Yeah. Right? And if not, then help me to have the patience to wait and in the meantime, to celebrate somebody else. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take away our desire when somebody else gets, you know, what they want. Somebody else has children. If I wanted children and he didn't give them to me, yeah. I don't stop wanting a baby because right. you have a baby, but I can celebrate the fact that he's given yeah. you a child. And I can say, Lord, if it's, if it's your will for me, then I trust your timetable. It's a trust thing. It's a trust it? thing. It's, it's really what it comes it's a down. trust issue. Contentment too. Contentment yeah. with what God's given you. I love Psalm 16 says, O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lions have fallen to me in, in pleasant, pleasant places. places. Yes. yes. I have a good inheritance. And I just think of that verse somewhere in the New Testament. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. And when you're content with what the lines that, yes. if we're all running in our lane. I don't need jealousy then. With the boundaries and the lane yeah. that God's given us. And honestly, we're all in we're all running in something different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm -hmm. um, you might be running with sand and it might look effortless, but you're actually right. really struggling. Yeah. And I think when we see each other um, hurting or um, increase, to be praying for yeah, each other because yeah. yeah. we know that yeah. anything that we're doing is hasn't come easy. Mm. It's 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 so just true. living a life mm. of surrender and yeah. hard work and struggle. And I just even think of that day when we have our crowns. We've yes. received our crowns because of the things that God decided that he wanted to do in us and anything that we walked in obedience with, we have these beautiful, yeah. this beautiful reward. But the fact that we're casting him down, yeah. I always even think this, like, it, even like it, graduations yeah. when yeah, people are throwing their hats up, like, are they going to go look for that hat? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cast yeah. their crowns down? Yeah. Are we going to go like look for it again? Or is it just like, yeah. how does it's that over, work? Yeah. But just the, the joy of knowing that that day is coming yeah. and that we're responsible for yeah. the things that God's called us yeah. to. Yeah. Can we really say, have the lines fallen to me in pleasant mm, places, beautiful. no matter what we've been through? And yeah. And we need each other Gratitude. to say, hey, we got this, keep running. Yeah, you know. encourage each other. Yeah. You know, I know some people are like, okay, so where do I find good friendships? You know, where do I find good sisterhood? Well, I say all the time, like, hey, if you're looking for treasure, you wouldn't search like a dumpster for it. Like every now and then you might find treasure there because somebody may have discarded it, but you go to a place that would hold treasure. And so I would say if you want good friendships, you got to be careful where you try and seek for good friendships. You may not find um, the caliber of sisterhood, godly sisterhood, that you would want to walk with you through life in places that God would say are dishonoring to him or in, not just necessarily in those environments, but people participating in those particular things. I ain't gonna go there. But my point is, if you want to seek them out, I'd say find them in, you know, ministry aspects or a church or in different single groups or um, doing a common mission that you feel like you would enjoy. Look for people of, of uh, similar spirits and mindsets and interests that you have. And perfectly, those are godly things. Because if you do, you have a better chance of finding godly people there. Are they gonna be perfect? No, wherever you find them, even godly people are not gonna be perfect. But if they have Christ as their center, at least you got somebody to report them to, at least you got somebody who's talking to them to get them straight later on if they get off. So I'd say definitely find them. Look for them, first of all, in godly environments, and then um, allow God to make the connection with you. You know what, something else too, Jenny, I was thinking about is that word jealousy, when we hear it, we're always thinking about it in the negative. But there is a positive side because God says that he's jealous for us. Mm. So there is a certain certain jealousy that says you are mine. Like I have, this is my place. These are my accolades that go to me and me alone. That I think there, I think oftentimes the thing, the jealousy we struggle with 
is wanting something that's not ours. Yeah. Right. If you, yeah. if somebody came and flirted with your husband, you have a right to be jealous for his affections, mm. not for him to look elsewhere. That's something that belongs to you. Mm. But for somebody else to be jealous of your relationship, that's wrong because that's not their relationship. Mm, yeah. Wow. So I think wow. we have to make sure that we look at that word holistically because it's yeah. several times in the Bible where God is yeah, saying, I right. am a jealous God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not a sinful God. Mm -hmm. He's not a hateful God. It's rightfully His. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that are rightfully yours mm -hmm. that you have a right to say no. You're jealous for the title of mama in your kid's life. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I earned that right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, so there are certain things, the, the beautiful side of it yes. is that, you know, we're allowed to have that, but f to, like to, to want like something, to yeah, mm -hmm. something that's not yours yeah, no, that's is where most of us cool. struggle. Yeah. That's the sinful side of that word, jealousy. Yeah as in the scripture. So mm -hmm. just throwing it out there, food for thought. Mm -hmm. no, um, I, think that's good. You know. I love the importance of connectivity. Yeah. You know, how important it is. The Bible talks about how we all have a supply for one another. Yeah. And there's no reason to compete because he no. says he has set every man you know, as it pleases, pleases him. him. So we yeah. all have a spot. We all have That's a certain right. assignment to fulfill here in the earth. Right. And if we just, you know, own our spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And own keep our looking spot. at what we're supposed absolutely. to look at. Absolutely. Take our mind, our attention off of each other. Yeah. yeah. Friendships are so necessary and so important to me. I was raised in a home with six siblings. I had four sisters and we were each other's best friends. And so when I began to grow up and to reach outside of that, I understood how important those relationships happen to be. But a lot of times we're not willing to put the work into it in order to get what we need out of it. It is okay to tell your friend that these are your expectations. It may not be your spouse. It may just be your good girlfriend or your good guy friend. But if you don't communicate what you expect, you won't get what you will need. So it's okay. Talk about it. And I think for women who are watching who don't have books coming out or albums coming out, it just comes down to um, wisdom, you know, asking wisdom of the Lord yeah. to know where we should invest our time. and yes. our. But, but finding ways, I, I have a thing where every morning I try to think, okay, who could I encourage today? It's so wow. yeah. And it's just, you know, sometimes it's a call. Sometimes I'll send flowers. Sometimes I'll just, call, you know, That's send a, a note. But just making that part of who we are, the very kind of fabric of our being, mm -hmm. is to lift our sisters up. I love mm. it. And, and so, when somebody does that to me, it just makes me yeah. smile. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just so, we yeah. can become like God's secret agents. Yeah. In this I earth. love yeah. that. Yeah. And it's and so you should play for us. I will no, definitely, so I will. I think really quickly too, I think you are doing what you, Dr. Didi, said earlier as mm. far as sowing good seeds. Mm. You don't know mm. who's, it's where it's going to come back from. from right? Right? You're not expecting it from this sister, that person. I'm, I'm just loving. I'm just yeah. doing what God has called me to do. Mm. And God says some water, some plant, mm -hmm. He will ultimately give the increase. Yeah. And we believe Amen. that He'll do it in friendships too. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Mm. Mm. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, first of all. Thank you for allowing us to be your daughters and making us sisters, Lord. Thank you, God. So, Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, I pray for my other brothers and my sisters who are watching mm -hmm. and who are in need of other brothers and sisters, Lord, to walk this journey out, Lord. Lord, I uh, just even specifically pray for my sisters who are watching, Lord, who may say, I don't have a, a good sister circle. I don't have a good friendship base, Lord, but they're wanting it, they're desiring it, Lord. So Lord, I pray that you would hear their hearts cry. I pray that you would show them, first of all, Lord, how to have a right relationship with you. Yes. And then, Lord, I pray that you would show them how to be a good friend, how to sow good yes, seeds Lord. of friendship, good yes. seeds yes. of love, good yes. seeds of trust, good seeds of goodwill. But I pray that you would show them how to not just read your word, but to do your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that as they're faithful in doing that, Lord, that you would add to them. You would show your faithfulness in their lives, Lord, by adding the right sisters to them, Lord, people that they can walk with, Lord. Mm -hmm. Show them the right traits that they need to develop. Jesus. And Lord, I pray that when it's all said and done, Lord, that they would be encouraged and that they would encourage others. And ultimately, they would give you the glory for everything yes. that you're doing. Yes. Last. So Lord, again, we thank you. Mm -hmm. We praise you. We worship you. And we yes. honor you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Dee Dee Freeman. And I'm Sheila Walsh. 
And we are here answering your questions behind the scenes at Better Together. You want to go first or you yeah, want me to go I first? I will. We okay. have a question here. This is a great question from Dora. My husband isn't a believer. How can I help him get to know Jesus? Oh, that is a good question. And the Bible is so clear yeah. on how you can help him. Over there in Peter, it talks about a wife can win a husband without a word, without saying a thing, but by your lifestyle. So if you just live out the word before him, the Bible says that you can win him over. Yeah. Real simple, real easy. And you probably say, how is that? Treat him the way that God treats you. Yeah, I just, I want to echo that because it's so easy to think I'll put a Bible under his pillow or I'll slip texts yeah, into put, his lunchbox. Oil everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll anoint him. But honestly, when you are so, people in love are infectious. Mm. If you become so in love with Jesus, I think he might want to know who is this Jesus. Yeah.